You don't need to be an expert in politics or even watch every TLDR video, although you obviously should, to know that Russia is a growing geopolitical threat. Their moves in Ukraine, their cyber attacks and their actions more generally are worrying many people. Considering Germany is the next biggest and arguably most influential country in Europe, you'd expect them to be pushing back, but historically Germany hasn't been. So in this video we're going to have a look at Germany's Russia policy, explaining exactly what it is and how it's currently creating a rift with the ruling coalition. European news is something that's often undercovered, at least in the English-speaking press. So if you want more, be sure to subscribe, and you can get even more from us over on Twitter and Instagram. They're linked below. Anyway, we're going to split this video into two parts. First, we're going to have a look at Germany's attitude to Russia and Putin in the recent past, suggesting that while there is a certain rationale behind it, it looks somewhat naive at the current moment. Second, we're going to have a look at how it's affecting domestic German politics and how it's exacerbating pre-existing tension between the SPD and the German Greens. So let's get into the first part of the video, Germany's attitude to Russia. Historically, Germany has taken a rather pragmatic two-track approach to Russia. The different aspects of the Russo-German relationship are partitioned. Germany essentially considers its economic relationship and its political relationship with Russia to be independent of each other. This is why, even as political relations between Germany and Russia have deteriorated after Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014, economic relations continued. Nord Stream 2 is the most obvious example of this, but it's not an outlier. Despite EU sanctions, Germany has consistently been one of the largest investors in Russia and was Russia's largest investor in 2020. Germany was also Russia's largest trading partner until 2009, when it was overtaken by China, but it's still comfortably in second place. You get the point. Germany prefers a two-track approach to Russia, which treats its economic and its political relationships as separate. The other thing worth noting about Germany's relationship with Russia is that the political side of the two-track relationship has usually been pretty sympathetic to Putin and Russia, with a near absolute preference for dialogue. There's always been a vocal section of the German political elite advocating for greater sympathy towards Russia, sometimes labelled as Russland Verster or Putin Verster, which translates to Russian understander or Putin understander. The Russland Verster usually comes from the German political left. But the AFD have taken a similar track in recent years, and while Merkel herself definitely wasn't particularly pro-Putin, she didn't stray too far from the line. For example, after Russian-backed forces gained the upper hand against Ukrainian forces in February 2015, Merkel immediately started a negotiation with Putin, eventually agreeing to a second Minsk agreement, otherwise known as Minsk II. As we've detailed in this video, Minsk II was both somewhat rushed and not particularly good for Ukraine. Anyway, you get the point. Germany's political relationship has reliably been relatively sympathetic to Putin and Russia. Anyway, both these aspects of the Russo-German relationship, its two-track nature and the sympathy for Russia apparent in the political side of the relationship, today look a bit naive. We're not saying they're necessarily intrinsically bad. In many cases, it might make sense. But with hindsight, they just don't seem to have worked. Let's start with the two-track thing. Two-track relations work if the other side plays by the same rules. You avoid a complete breakdown in relations because even if one part of the relationship goes to pieces, you've always got the other. Unfortunately, Putin clearly isn't playing by the same rules. He's made it clear that he's willing to use gas and economics for political leverage, which sort of renders the two-track approach redundant. This doesn't necessarily mean that Germany should give up on the two-track approach, but hoping that Russia will treat Germany the same way is naive. Similarly, the German preference for understanding and dialogue looks to have backfired. Presumably in part encouraged by the timidity of the German and wider European response to both Crimea and Donbass, Putin is currently threatening to invade Ukraine. Understanding and dialogue are great if they successfully decrease the chance of conflict, but so far this doesn't seem to have worked. If anything, it's plausibly increased the chance of conflict. Now, German Russland Versters 
might argue that it's really down to anti-Russian aggression on the part of other NATO members and the US, but this still means that the policy of unilateral Russian sympathising has failed, and they instead should have coordinated a Western foreign policy towards Russia. Again, we should be clear, we're not saying that understanding and dialogue is bad per se, just that in this case, it seems to have backfired. Anyway, some commenters expected a change of policy with the new SPD-FDP Green Coalition, largely because the German Greens have long advocated for a tougher line on both China and Russia, and expectations only rose when it was announced that Green Party co-leaders Annalena Baerbock and Robert Harbeck would become Foreign Minister and Minister for Economic Affairs and Climate Action, respectively, giving them serious influence over Germany's foreign policy direction. The final draft of the coalition agreement was unequivocal, stating that we demand an immediate end to efforts to destabilise Ukraine, to the violence in eastern Ukraine and the annexation of Crimea, which was illegal according to international law. However, so far, not much seems to have changed. Schultz has continued with a two-track policy, repeating Merkel's line that Nord Stream 2 is a private sector project and therefore outside the government's remit and arguing that how Germany should respond to Putin's aggression in Ukraine is a, quote, separate question. This line was echoed by the SPD's general secretary in a recent interview with Reuters, where he insisted that the project shouldn't be mixed up with what's happening in Ukraine. Equally, while Schultz has warned the Kremlin that any aggression in Ukraine would have a high price, he's also reaffirmed Germany's commitment to, quote, constructive dialogue. Now, in some ways, this shouldn't be too surprising. While Schultz himself isn't particularly Kremlin-friendly, he's definitely still closer to Merkel than Baerbock when it comes to Russia. In an interview with DW during the general election campaign in 2021, he was quoted as advocating for a new Ostpolitik, referring to the normalisation between West Germany and the Soviet Union in the 60s, led by Chancellor Willy Brandt. To be fair to Schultz, Ostpolitik worked, and there were some glaring similarities. At the time, the rest of Western Europe and the US were becoming more aggressive towards the Soviet Union, but Germany successfully normalised relations, ultimately signing the 1972 Basic Treaty with East Germany. It's also worth noting that the SPD has a sizeable Russland Verster contingent, including two former chancellors, Schroeder and Helmut Schmidt. Schroeder and Putin have a rather conspicuous bromance. They've spent Christmas together in Moscow, shared laughs on the beach in Sochi, and even laid a wreath at the grave of German philosopher Immanuel Kant. This is likely helped by the fact that Putin speaks excellent German, presumably thanks to the five years he spent in Dresden as a KGB agent from 1985 to 1990. When Schroeder lost to Merkel in 2005, he immediately took up a post at the Nord Stream Consortium, a Gazprom subsidiary, and has since held a swathe of lucrative positions for Russian conglomerates. For his part, Helmut Schmidt has described Putin's annexation as Crimea as certainly understandable, and this isn't even a radical position in the SPD. A former SPD chairman went as far as calling for Russia's annexation of Crimea to be regulated ex post facto by international law. The point we're making is that the ruling party in Germany has a big Russland Verster contingent, so it makes sense, unsurprisingly, that they've taken a relatively soft line on Russia. Unsurprisingly, this has caused some tension with the Greens, who've long advocated for a tougher line on Russia. According to reports from German newspaper Bild, Schultz has sidelined Baerbock by taking over Russia negotiations, with a meeting between Schultz and Putin planned for January. This will only add to pre-existing tensions in the coalition. According to report, the Greens and the SPD have already had some internal disagreements over whether to accept the EU's characterisation of natural gas as a green energy source. This was something they couldn't agree on during coalition negotiations last year, when it was conspicuously left out of the final draft. So you get the point. Schultz is continuing Merkel's Russia policy, and this is probably causing some tension within the coalition. It remains to be seen exactly how this will play out, and who exactly ends up calling the foreign policy shots between Schultz and Baerbock, but it's worth keeping an eye on. Anyway, what do you think? Is Schultz right to try for a new Ostpolitik? And how will this affect domestic German politics? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. 
Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos like these people, then you can sign up using the link below. Thanks.